What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we are going to use Figma to design the perfect search bar. Now this video is inspired by an article I just saw this morning from Sarah Edwards here on UX UI Tips, a guide to search inputs. I'd suggest checking it out. The link is in the YouTube description here. Uh, I'm gonna throw in my own two cents as well. And we're gonna create a really robust and dynamic search bar in Figma using components and component variants. All right, as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead here in Figma. Um, we're gonna create a new frame. This time I'm just gonna choose the desktop, and specifically, uh, I wanna show the placement uh, of what's expected. Uh, typically for a search bar, there's been, this is one of the things that's included in that article. So we're gonna do desktop, even though we're just designing a single uh, search bar. So I'm gonna use a blue color, uh, a light blue color for the background, just for something different. Um, the hex value for that is E0E9F5, if you wanna follow along. Uh, now let's go ahead and get a, our actual type first. Um, so for the type, we're gonna put in um, a specific uh, kind of placeholder value, but it's, it's not a placeholder value, it would be a floating label in this case. So it's gonna be uh, search drum kits. So we're gonna pretend that this is for some type of drum manufacturer or something like that. Um, for the size of this, we're going to use 18, which would be a pretty good size here on desktop. And the intention is this for this to be in a nav, so you can't make it too large. If this is like in a hero section, you could definitely make the type larger if your primary call to action was like, you know, a big search bar. <clears throat> but for now, we're just gonna leave it here. And I, we're gonna go ahead and take the rectangle and get our actual text field container. Use our left bracket key to put that underneath. And we're gonna make this white. All right, so this is a pretty good pattern when it comes to color selection. You have a light background. Uh, if you have like cards or like a search bar or something, um, you can certainly use just a white color on an already light background. Now, if you want it to be uh, really stand out, you can add a stroke along with that as well. Um, it doesn't have to be the maximum contrast, like black or something. In fact, let me show you, if I were to add a stroke to this, I, I would probably make it, I would grab the color it's on, if it's a colored background, and then just do this, kind of just make it darker um, in the same hue with uh, gray added into it, not like full saturation, although you could do that for a focus state, which would be cool. All right, um, I'm, I'm gonna opt just to leave that off. Okay, so now what we're gonna have uh, is an actual magnifying glass icon. Uh, that's something that's pretty much expected. Users expect that as a universally recognized symbol um, for search specifically. So. We don't have to make one from scratch. You can use the Iconify plugin. We can type in Magnify, which I already did, and we'll drag one on there. And obviously some of these show up real large, so you gotta scale them down. And we're gonna put one right here. And we're also, you could leave it like this, um, but I wanna make it more of a button style. So I'm gonna hit R for the rectangle tool, and we will drag out. We'll put it underneath that. There we go. And we'll go ahead and take both of these. So by selecting both layers, auto layout over here, we're gonna click plus and make sure it's centered up in the middle. That way, if you need to make adjustments, it'll stay in the center. All right, so color for this. Uh, we don't, I, I really hate seeing grays, like complete gray devoid of color next on top of or adjacent to um, color. So what we're gonna do is kind of the same technique. We're gonna take the fill We'll get the background it's sitting on and maybe we'll just make it a little bit darker. Not much though. I do also like to have, uh, in most cases, although you don't have to, is some rounded borders. So maybe we'll make it like three. 
you can see the rounded corners there and then all this also i see people do this sometimes they'll have like a button that has rounded corners like this but maybe like the container and it's in doesn't have any rounded corners that doesn't make sense to me so we should uh, double this up so this would be six and now it kind of just flows and it's more consistent and it's just nicer all right so what i'm going to do now is we're going to take this uh, element right here i'm going to make a component out of it because i do want to have a hover state over it so when somebody hovers over it uh, it's going to change in a subtle manner the background color of this search button so let's go ahead and create that that's the component and here's a component variant <clears throat> now i'm going to store the component variants here off the side in a frame um we'll do like one around this side size rather and we're going to just drag this over here and then for this variant right here I'll go ahead and change the fill and we're just going to make it slightly darker, maybe a little bit more color infused in there and that's it. So now we'll go ahead into prototype tab and we're going to drag a connection there and this will be while hovering and that's it. Now there's a new update to Figma that has this area right here, this little option that's where you can access your components and so I'll just go ahead and drag that and we'll put it right over here and we're ready to rock. Now, another thing we can also do is we can take uh, this component and this background, the actual text field design, and we can add it in auto layout out of that. Uh, we can also do it for this as well, uh, include this in the auto layout. So if I take these three, add auto layout, there we go. Now let's see how it responds if we drag this in and out. So that's not the, the desired behavior of what I would want for this. Um, so there's a couple ways you can deal with this. Um, I think what we're gonna do is just gonna keep it right aligned, centered. Now watch what happens to this, that kind of stays over there. So if we double click on this and we change uh, from hug contents to fill container, it's gonna give us the desired, I, I guess you could say behavior as much as possible. Um, now I will go ahead and adjust this part And we could also reduce that as well. There we go. Okay, so that's looking pretty good right there. For search drum kits, I'm not want to use Enter. I'm going to use uh, Poppins. I like that font better. It's just like a personal preference. All right, looking pretty good. All right, so this is going to be the actual uh, search field as it looks untouched. All right, but we have to design for a couple other instances, and this would help stakeholders understand uh, and also the front end developers understand uh, how that needs to be coded and how it will actually look and interact. So the f next state we would have to worry about is when somebody clicks into this in order to start typing. This isn't going to be a placeholder value. You should never rely just on placeholder values. Um, this is going to be a floating label, which means when somebody clicks into this to start to begin to type, this search drum kits will kind of just float up above in a smaller font so that they can start typing, but the label will still always be there invisible, all right? So what that would look like is we take this type, um, let's just duplicate it out, there we go. Change this to size like 14, and it's gonna sit right there. Now, of course, this is gonna be hidden at that point, um, and we're also going to go ahead and create a, another, we're gonna duplicate this, except, let's see here, we're gonna pull this out, and then we will make an adjustment here. So what I wanna do, when you, um, here in Figma, when you drag this in, it's gonna to try to create and make it a part of this auto layout. I'm just gonna go ahead and push this up with my keyboard up arrow key, and I'm gonna put in like a fake value, like a search term, Roland T. All right, so that's for like Roland TD 50K. I'm only gonna put Roland T though, just to illustrate the uh, auto suggestions. And temporarily, I'm gonna take this right here and we're gonna change the fill to 0% so we can just see this Roland T portion. And this is what um, the text is gonna look like when somebody actually types into the search bar. So we're gonna grab the color here and we're just gonna make it you know, something like right around there. So that's 2B65B4. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and also 
create, let's say, uh, create another rectangle here or hit R. The drop down for the auto suggestion. So again, we'll make this six. All right, we'll copy this and we'll replicate that. Um, bring it out there. All right, and so these are going to be auto suggestion drop down. So TD 50K, do you mean that one? Um, and what we can do now also is we can create a component variant out of this. So I'm going to give a little bit more white space here. If we wanted to as well, we could um, create a rectangle around this. So we can create a hover state. So let's do that. Get this color. This will be underneath here. All right, and we'll make this three. Okay. And maybe we'll make it just a little bit lighter. Yeah, right around there looks good. All right, so now what we can do is take that and then we can create an auto layout out of it. All right, so we'll make this left line. That way we can push this all the way here. Actually, we could do, uh, no, not HUD contents. Well, for now, we're just going to leave it uh, hard coded there in terms of the width. So now what we could do is take uh, this and make a component variant out of it. So yes, we're gonna have a quite elaborate single component search function that has embedded components with component variants in them. And this is gonna be a hover state. So um, somebody hovers over this, it'll make it slightly darker, which is fine. Uh, we'll take a prototype while hovering, just like the other one above it. And there we go. So we'll go back to our components here. We'll put this there. And then we could take these two and we can make an auto layout. So now we can duplicate this and then that, and then there we go. Now we could also adjust the white space between them. I want a little bit closer. Actually, I'd like to have equal white space all around and in between, which is right here, this looks pretty good. Awesome. Okay, so now what we'll do is we have to worry about one more thing, and that's going to be um, as a part of the article that's mentioned at the beginning of this video. I uh, we're going to have a "Did you mean?" section in case somebody you know misspells something or whatever. I'm going to move this down temporarily. We'll just take this, replicate it with Shift Alt down. Did you mean? Oops. <laughs> not SpongeBob text. Uh, did you mean? And then we'll just say Roland, something like that. We'll make this keyword bold. Presumably, presumably they'll be able to click it. I'm uh, in colored. There we go. All right, and that looks pretty good to me for there. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to hide all the necessary. Um, layers and stuff before we create a component out of all this. So initially this is going to be hidden. So we're going to take the paths pass through to zero. This is going to be hidden. The pass through is going to be zero. This will be hidden. Oops. And then let's see here. This will come back to life. So we'll put 100% on that. And then finally, this right here will be hidden. So we'll put zero. Now we take all that stuff that we just created and we create a component out of it. And now we'll just move that over there. Let's just replicate this for a second, delete all this, get the same background color. And this is gonna be kind of lengthy, so I'm gonna pull it down. And now what we're gonna do is take this, create a component variant, and we're just gonna drag the whole thing over here. All right, so this is the default. Property, we'll just leave the name as default for property one. And then this one is gonna be focus. So this is gonna be our focus state. And when we focus, let's see here, um, what's gonna change? Well, this search drum kits is going to hide. So we'll make that fade out zero. Now, typically in a real world context, when it's realized in front end development, I would actually have it um, 
it would it would simply not hide it, or the opacity won't change it would the size would change and location would change uh, but doing that in an auto layout context is a little bit I don't even think it's possible so uh, we're just gonna make this one uh, fade out and then this one up here will fade in and we can make it slide up if we take the previous state here and just push it down so I'm, I'm choosing that one that's hidden and just that way it'll kind of flow up so just to show you what this looks like so far um, let's go to prototype and add an interaction right here we'll drag it this is simply going to be on click and we'll change um, instant to smart animate 300 milliseconds so now if we hit play oh <laughs> we kind of have to drag one off in here there we go uh, this is let's see frame three component one there we go so let's go back um, let me get control four here just so we could do this and there you go so you see how it kind of just floats up all right control four get back all right so one other thing I want to change I think I do want to do this stroke idea um, around here to give the actual text field a stroke so um, we can add a stroke and we'll make that stroke this color yeah maybe something like that let's see what that looks like yeah I like it okay cool so now let's go ahead and do the next state um, so the next state is going to be showing the actual search term and the search term I uh, let's take the pass through to a hundred and I think what we'll do is maybe we'll use yeah we'll just do it another click based uh, approach for that um, so what we'll do is um, add our interaction on click change to smart animate all that's fine that'll work um, so if we go back there we go and then we're gonna do a delay based animation so we're gonna duplicate this and by the way probably be a good idea to change these uh, you know this is this one's this one is changed from okay so that's focused this is typed I'm just calling that uh, property value typed this one's going to be suggestions now suggestions we're gonna double click here in this invisible area to select it pass through is a hundred um, and we'll make it come up or kind of fall down by moving it up with our keyboard arrow keys and the one above it um, and then we'll take our prototype double click into here this is going to be after delay at the bottom and the delay could be like 500 milliseconds so now let's go back here click on it up oh. let's I uh, let's close this out oops I didn't want to do that let's close that out there we go let's hit play all right so here we go showing up click it and then there we go look at that now that is pretty dynamic and then one final adjustment we're gonna make here is we're gonna add one more and for this one this will be another click based prototype so let's click that that's all good on click and this one is simply going to hide what well, we're going to put zero through pass through and we'll also push it up again and then this time we have to click in here and find uh, the did you mean right here and bring that out so 100% through pass through and this is going to be uh, did you mean did you mean there you go all right so now we should have a, a fully functioning search bar um, and let me show you before we uh, get this like where would this where would you put this typically or where do most people expect it um, so typically they expect it on the they favor on the upper right corner typically like in a nav bar um, or you can go in the middle as well so if I typed in a, a, some company uh, fake logo here we'll make that size 22 maybe we make it bold maybe we'll give company this uh, primary color something like that just to give our, our design some context I uh, push just like right around here and then real quickly we'll do a home 
Let's make this size 18 though. And then we will also duplicate that. And this is gonna be regular. Drum kits. Contact, just a simple navigation, something like this. I Let's push this out a little bit further, kind of eyeballing it. This one will be centered up, and it is. There we go. Okay, so this is kind of a, a typical context. You might find it, Some you might put it over here, you might put it over here. You have leeway, a lot of it is subjective. Um, and now let's go ahead and take this and hit play. So we can see this final interaction. All right, so let's get in a little bit closer, control four. We do that, we click it to show what the type will look like. We show the auto suggestions. Obviously you wanna change these up uh, to make them look different. Uh, click this just to show you the, the, yeah, the did you mean section. And there you go. There we go. Uh, now I would probably push this down a little bit because of the lack of white space above here, it gets a little bit cluttered. Um, but yeah, pretty solid overall. Uh, one thing I would do is just so you can get back to the initial state, go to prototype and to just push this up to the beginning state right there on click. So now we can go back and then repeat the process right here. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you learned something new and you wanna learn more about UI UX, definitely check out designcourse.com to take my interactive UI UX course. Also, subscribe here, leave a comment, like all that good stuff that every other YouTuber tells you to do endlessly, and I will see you soon. All right, goodbye.